Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to another new episode of Between the Sheets podcast here on the United Broadcasting Network. Don't forget you can call in 323-524-2599. The number will appear somewhere in between the show, but it's 323-524-2599. Do you know how many times I almost give out my cell phone number because it starts with 323? Three. That's why it's like, I re- finally remember the number, but it's like, I mean, as if people don't have my cell phone number, but still, it's like, I, I don't need unnecessary harassment. Um, but we have a wonderful show today, um, a mixed bag of everyone. I mean, it's so funny, and I literally said this twice because I, if anyone who knows me, I have to repeat things twice because I just want to make sure people are listening to me. I think that's like a trigger thing. But I said it's so funny because a lot of the people besides COVID, you know, we see each other in and out. We zoom in and each of out of each other's lives. And it, it's like Between the Sheets has now become sort of like the reunion show every two weeks. It's like, oh my God, how are you? Oh my God, how are you? So I haven't seen you in years. So um, I have a wonderful mixed bag today of my friends um, family and um, we'll start with the ladies on Zoomy Zoom Zoom. We'll start with Cheryl Murphy. Good, good afternoon. Aww. Good evening, Cheryl Murphy. Good evening, Gay Ann. Hello, you lovely ladies. It's so nice to be here tonight. So I'm excited about our guest tonight. Well, I just want to not to not to overshadow tonight's guest, but I want to say thank you, Cheryl. If anyone knows um, psychic medium uh, Thomas John, he has a TV show and he's amazing i mean he's just amazing so Cher- i asked cheryl can you ask him if he'll be on the show and yeah. he is and he's going to be on october 3rd i think right cheryl oh, yes, yes <clears throat> october 3rd and he is so excited he uh, would love to it's love to. i'm so excited because he's kind of in my family you know what i mean and, and <laughs> i mean besides that he is family i mean he's kind of in our family um like with uh, the, the 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 station that carries his tv show you know, is also a conglom- part of my conglomerate. So I'll be looking forward to um, having Thomas John on the show. Um, also, thank you, Cheryl. You're welcome. I also have, and I see it to the right of me on my screen, um, she is a clairvoyant, an astrologer, a musician, and someone who I adore dearly, has become a very good friend, Amadeus. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Another another uh, psychic medium human, right? I think you collect us, right? I think, what is it? It's like, what is it? Light attracts light, energy yeah, attracts energy. energy. Yeah, yes. So, you know, it's like, it's, you know, it, that's, I put it, it out there. It's in you. Yes, it, it means it's in you. And I'm delighted to be here because I get to do both sides today. And Andy is a wonderful human being. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, I try you. to have wonderful human beings on the show <laughs> um, because I, I'm a wonderful being collector. And it's all yes. about... And you know what? It's so funny because <clears throat> a lot of the people in you know that I've been you know around, and I'm not saying this particular crowd, but we all seem to be on the fringe of of the of the. We all are fringe people, you know. We're fringe people. <laughs> fringe fringe. We're the fringe of the fringe. Um, which you know, hey, I'm fine that way. I don't want to ever be like <laughs> I don't want to be like homogenous and mix in. But I find that the people on the fringe, like us, we are much more interesting <laughs> and have much more substance. So um, yeah, I, I I try and collect the uh, because I, I, I am because I am. Um, and then we have Mara Shane. Hi. How How's are everyone? you? Good. Mari, Great to be here. Mara, you got nothing to say? Nothing out of one? I mean, of course I do. I have so much to say. Um, I am so glad to be here. It's been um, too long, and I can't, I just I can't wait for the show. Well, we're on it. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't wait for the unfolding of the show tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, and then she's taken, uh, well, she didn't take a break. She didn't say, I'm off this fucking show. But she hasn't <laughs> been around um, because she's been busy. I follow her and her partner, wife, Kim, on Facebook. They've been traveling. Um, and it's her birthday. It was her birthday. So happy belated birthday, Vicki <laughs> Wagner. Thank you. Happy birthday. Hey. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And my birthday was just this past Sunday, so Leo's in the house. <laughs> hey, raise the roof. That's right. 
that's Leo. I that's love Leo. I could use some, like, maybe a psychic uh, reading or some, a brief little reading. Like, am I going to win the lotto or what? <laughs> <laughs> you got a new moon. I have a thing for Leos. I've dated, like, I haven't dated that many. I've been not dated enough, but in relationships, three Leo, th- no, four Leos. Four. I, I like to date only fire one signs. Energetic, That's why. Uh, it's my Leo rising. I think that attracts uh, the fire yeah. signs. So, yes. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in studio, <clears throat> I have Margie Duran or Marguerite <laughs> Duran. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here this evening. And Hi. then Hi, let's see who we got. All the way from, well, originally from Jersey, another Jersey girl, um, <clears throat> via Beverly Hills to now in Burbank. Um, I met her, God, through a friend, Mel. Yes. Yeah. And um, she's like, you two got to meet. You just are so funny. You're from Jersey. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there was some party-ish thing and... Finally, I met you, and we immediately bonded and have the same sick sense of Jersey humor. Um, we're very, we're not demure. I think probably, <laughs> I think all the Jersey are. people understand each other. It's like it's, it's a thing. It's a culture. It's a it's a it's a vibe. That's so, right. <clears throat> I was very you know happy to meet one of my other kind of people, and I would <laughs> love to welcome to the show Lisa Rubel. Thank you Woo! so much for having Hi, me. It's so I funny. She, you know what? This woman has been kvetching, kvetching. <laughs> I want to come on your show. Have me come on your show. Today's <clears> the day. COVID hit. No show. Today mm. she's sitting here and she's talking like this. Very. I said, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong? She goes, I'm nervous. What are you ne- nervous? Please. I've been in California way too long. I've been, come on. I mean, I'm <laughs> no, I love your accent. Lisa, Sorry. I love her, that accent. Her accent yes. is worse than mine. Just no. noted. Oh, noted. Prevalent. Noted. Yes. Don't piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting out of your way. Um, Get out of here. And so, you know, Lisa, Lisa will be part of the, uh, the uh, rotating co-host if she, you know, if she uh, right. enjoys doing this because I, I think she's a great addition. Um, and, you know, as you all know, all my people always, you know, that join, we are always welcome to be co-hosts anytime. And now... We have Andy Franklin, who is the actual guest, Andy with an I, the guest from the show. And I want to say welcome, Andy. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So um, I met Andy. It had to be at a musical event first. I can't remember which one. Do you? I can't either. No, it was some <laughs> musical event. And and Andy was there and she was very she was very now she is demure, okay? And quiet. And um and she came up and said, Hello, I'm Andy Franklin. I'm like, Hi, how are you? And she said, you know, because I was kind of everyone thinks I'm new. You know, I was more, new. More. Um <laughs> I everybody thought I was new, but I'm not new, but I just have been <laughs> not here. I, I know you guys disappeared and came back. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> We're still having that fucking problem, Tony. Um, So what happened is I was just introduced to Andy and saying that I met Andy at at a musical event, and she was very demure, unlike Lisa. And she came up to me, and she was very welcoming, and she was like, hi, I'm Andy. And then we started talking. Oh, I know where it was. It was the Motown CBS special. Yes, that's right. And I was working. I actually was working that event. That was one of the events I worked in. And there was another person there. Um, and then Andy and their Facebook friends. And they said, we're going to be there because I posted I'm going to be working. The I gr- think Grammy tribute. The Grammy tribute. And I think Andy actually reached out to me as this other person. So I'm like, where are you sitting? Because I'm backstage. I'm not watching the show. Yeah. And so I get like places where these people sit in like one, one intermission thing. I ran up to say hi to one and then the other intermission. <clears throat> I, for some reason, couldn't find Andy. I just couldn't find her. And it was, and then I got busy because I had to do my photo shoot with all those people in the back. So it was like, whoosh, gone. So on my drive home, because I felt so bad that I didn't touch base with Andy, I called her on my drive home. And I'm like, hi, I'm so sorry. We're going to have to meet up another time, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, throughout, throughout, throughout lesbian history. We had many things in common. Yes. Music and. Music and such. So anyway, so that's how I met Andy. And that is how and why she's on the show, because I wanted her on. And I want to actually thank Deborah McNulty, um, who actually (laughs) said, I think you need to have Andy on the show. And I said, yes, because there's so many wonderful people in this community. Mm -hmm. And I forget everybody. 
So whenever someone like wants someone on, just call me. And it's like, oh, shit, because there's so many people. So welcome to the show yet again, Andy. And who wants to start off with a question with from Andy? Anybody? I do. All right, Mara. So, Andy, I saw that you are uh, you are in the Warner Brothers studio. Or no, what was it, Sony? I, I'm sorry. I just know you have a music, heavy music history. Um, and so I would like to know, how did you get into that? How did it come about for you? Well, it's about 30 years ago professionally, um, but I have been playing instruments since I was seven years old and always loved the music industry. And growing up locally here in L.A., um, my brother and I both just loved film and music. But mm -hmm. as for professionally, I worked my way through the label um, circuit and started Atlantic Records. I was very lucky after I went to college and then got another little degree and I was first uh, got my first job at Atlantic Records and I went on to work at Warner Records and BMG oh, yeah. and during the years and as well as independent projects um, but it's just sort of uh, I sent out resumes where people were laughing mm -hmm. in the early 90s uh, before the internet guys and yeah. <laughs> I did about 200 of them and my friend was like you have to know somebody and for some reason I just sent it out and they were looking for somebody and it was just perfect timing and I got very lucky that way. What did you start out though? What did you start out doing? What was your position that well, you started off with? I worked uh, We worked for a new division that focused on albums, kids albums, and a lot of audio books. And so we were um, a, uh, let's see, a joint uh, division of Warner Brothers and Atlantic Records. And we would wow. take all of Warner books and read the manuscript and do the audio book. Now, the difference is with the audio books, this time they wanted music involved for the first time because usually you would hear a narrative at that time. So it was my responsibility to work with the producers and get the music. And that's how I sort of pseudo started music supervising without the visual because I would get a feeling for music or suggest things. And as well, because of my background, I had a paralegal certificate, I would also clear it. I worked at Paramount Pictures before I started at, at um, Atlantic Records, and um, I'm just aware. I take so many classes and you know knowledge. So I have a question clear. because yes. for those of us who are not in the music business, what does that mean, music supervising? Well, uh, music supervising as it is now and since the 90s, and actually it, it goes way back to the 50s. It's almost like a director. <laughs> you really every type of did film. Can you hear me? Is a yes. Can you hear me? Every type uh, of well, I wonder, did you hear me? Because for those of us who are not in the music business, what is that? Because I just saw um, Respect with Jennifer Anna, with Jennifer Hudson today. Right. You know, the, the wow. biopic about Aretha Franklin. It's wonderful, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my question is, for those of us who are not in the music industry, yes. you said you were a music supervisor. Yes. What does that mean? Yes, so I was, I was saying that for it, every project's different, but what a music supervisor does is oversee basically the music and you are the go in between between the director and the composer and the feel the music is the emotion of a movie or any type of visual work and mm -hmm. you have to be able to translate back and forth certain projects you're more involved than not if a director is very involved on the music he's just going to want to tell you what to pursue sometimes a director will look at you and say tell me what you would do and you fit that and so you have more freedom so every project's different but you oversee the clearance the you know uh, the recording sessions whatever it needs to happen and it depends on how many people but you're really involved with the composer you do spotting yeah. notes from the script so I have All a question through. yes I didn't know that you started that way you didn't go the route of the uh, intern first you started doing this right away with the audio books and things right away yes I got thrown in um, I worked with a executive VP who was running a lot of things and he just threw me and I yeah. sort of sank or swim and I was fortunate because these audio books we also did music books because of the record label so I was mm -hmm. fortunate to work in the studio with like Barry Gordy on his autobiography oh. I actually wound up nice. working with the producers and I started associate producing or producing some things like a Doors project or Grateful Dead or things like that so I worked with Danny oh. Sugarman too who is the publicity for the Doors publicist for the Doors and manager and uh, just, you know, learned a lot. It was just uh, being a fly on the wall on a lot of things and just grateful. Yeah. That's amazing. I have one more question. <laughs> sure. so, so the audiobooks and everything, you know, and people, uh, you know, doing that now, it's a big thing. I'm so curious what the difference is now because technology and, and what people look for and being able to go online, uh, what's the difference? Like, Well, with the music, as you know, with technology, there is um, – 
it's saturated, of course, because everyone's mm -hmm. doing their stuff, um, but there's more libraries. There's so many ways to what you need according to your budget. Um, a lot of times it still goes back to the old fashioned. It's all who you know sometimes and your friends and if you work together and it's the right project. I, I try to be fair. You have to remember when you're doing any project or for director, the music should be about the project and not like yes. your friend or trying to fit something. And mm -hmm. in the 90s, I felt like a lot of labels were just pushing their artists, even <laughs> if that music didn't make sense for a film. And it right. shouldn't be, because you know like a cue sometimes, like a Jaws or two note cue, something like mm -hmm. that is so powerful and meaningful. So it's all, it's all should be, if you're a good supervisor or a good, you know, just anything, you, you should know that it's about the project first. Well, yeah. I find some, I'm sitting here <clears throat> and I'm staring. I'm just absolutely yeah. staring at uh, Andy's notebook. <laughs> um, and I'm like, as you guys, because I'm not on camera, so I'm like, I'm cheating. You remember we used to cheat in school? And don't fucking say you never cheated. Um, <clears throat> he's like, what is she writing? Maybe I can see. So <clears throat> Andy's so cute. Hold on, I'm going to put it. Uh, you got to show the front. Andy <laughs> has <laughs> a notebook, a notebook with notes. You, and she's so cute. She's like, yes. you know, I want, she goes, can I have it by me? I promise I won't look at it. I just need to know. I said, are you kidding? This is like between the sheets. We are so not polished, yeah. you know. <clears throat> it is what it is. It's normal life. It's also an official police booklet that actually is a prop from Lethal Weapon. <laughs> ah. <is> also <laughs> oh, speak, I mean, if, if we're going to start promoting things, I have, um, uh, Sean, do a close-up on me for a second. And it's, this is, I mean, it's going to be a boob shot, but it's more important than a boob shot. Hold on. <laughs> what are you showing? Fixin' Fido's. That is an organization that, um, it's a rescue organization. It also helps fix um, oh. animals. Um, oh. My friend Casey Montoya, who is a newscaster and a weather person, that's her organization. She actually, it's so funny because she gave me this t-shirt to try and I said, oh, I'm wearing it on Friday. I'll promote it. And I'll go, oh, by the way, I never asked you. You want to be on my show? And she's like, yes. And I'm like, okay. So Fixin' Fido's, look it up online. Um, Casey Montoya will be a new guest. Sorry, this I just, right. I don't know. I, I don't know. This is hey, what Andy. I'm telling you. There's nothing normal about this show, That's Andy. Good. Andy, well, I have a question you a for you. Who is this? Cheryl. Did you grow up in a in a musical family or can you tell us about your family and well, actually, what kind of music you grew up to, listening to? And I do have to give kudos to both my mom and my grandmother. Uh, my mom and my grandmother are back east, Brooklyn and Boston. And my grandmother played violin since she was little. She actually played with um, the, uh, not the Boston Pops, but she grew up with Arthur Fiedler and she played in the gazebo. They both played violin together. And then uh, my mom learned piano very early, classically trained, and she sang. And my mom actually went to high school with Barbara Streisand in the same year and sang with her in the chorus. They were friends. Um, but they just showed me, both of them, their appreciation of Broadway music when I was little and plays mm. and all that stuff that I grew up in, all sorts of good, you know, it was like disco years and I was in the marina and my parents were separated and everything went and mm. we just grew up and I love like funk we're music. We're going to have to guess. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so I can't hear that. Uh, everything, everything. We're going to guess what you're saying, like a mime almost. Yeah, right. Oh, you can't hear us? <laughs> no. The, right. the up, up to Barbara Streisand and then it went mute. That's it. But you know, you had us at Barbara Streisand. <laughs> yeah. That's the energy. That's the end. That's all you need to close. That's your closer right there. <laughs> Can you hear us now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so I have no. What, Sean? What's going on? We're we're good. I, I know we're good now. There's a ghost in there. I know. Boo. You're gonna have to find out what's happening. And speaking of Broadway musicals, guess where I'm going on tomorrow night? Where? The oh. sing along sound of music yeah, at the Hollywood that's Bowl. Wonderful. Oh, no. oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be very fun. I have that's the first concert. Well, it's not really a concert, but it's the first outdoor whatever that I've been, that I've been in a year and a half. So I'm pretty excited. Oh, I think tomorrow that's they fun. start the rules that you're going to have to wear a mask though outside. No, we are. Outside? Yeah, we have to wear masks outside. They they send a little thing saying we have to wear masks outside except if we're eating. But I'm in a box, so so we ordered. No, it's like my friends like, what do you want to? What do you want? What do you want to go slow. buy? What? Yeah, no, exactly no, popcorn. that's the thing. No, 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 oh, this, this is the that funny. Way, you know, Cause I was just at the movies. I was eating my popcorn. Really popcorn. No, 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 this is, <laughs> this is the funny part is we're sitting there and he's like, you know, we're going to go run and get some stuff. I'm like, I'm not running and buying a picnic basket. Let's just, let's just, you know, let's just splurge and just order it from that restaurant. So we looked at it and it's like, I don't want a sandwich. I don't like salmon. And then there was the barbecue feast. And I'm like, <laughs> 
oh my God, there's like four types of food. I mean, it's like soup to nuts. And I'm like, wow. let's order this one. It's a lot of money, but let's wow. order it because they, it, they will keep food coming throughout the evening. Mm. So you can just, wow. so you just nosh. It's like, you know, it's like appetizer and then main good nosh. You nosh, you nosh. <laughs> the Jewish Italian thing. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to dress up? No. Okay, because people dress and you're up. You're vaccinated anyway, right? I'm so vaccinated. You're pretty, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're pretty protected. And you know what? And the reality is, if I have to wear a mask, I will. I don't right. care. Yeah. It's we like my it. joke is, if I have to wear a mask, I you know, but the what's the worst fucking like problem that I won't have to put lipstick on? Right. Other than that, yeah. that's right. I'm good. And just, and just if you're eating the barbecue feast and you get it in your teeth, nobody will that's notice. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I am going to bring in a whole bunch of freaking mints and shit because barbecue, you breathing your own barbecue. <laughs> nah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just hope it doesn't turn into the sound of mucus. <laughs> oh, my God. Yuck. So, Lisa. So, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. I've been there to the sound of music. So. You've been to the sound of People mucus. People dress up as jam and bread. Yes. Edelweiss, yes. they're running around. Hey, look, truth be told, truth be told, in high school, we did the sound of music. And I had a role. I played whatever the hell her name was. It was Mother Superior. <laughs> Mother Superior. Climb every mountain. So exactly. So I had to dress up in the nun thing, and that was easy yeah. to get because I was in an all girls Catholic school. So I just borrowed one of the nuns' uniforms, <laughs> and and yes, and I had my solo, the only solo. Wait a minute, I've never seen The Sound of Music. What's it about? Are you kidding? <laughs> you yeah, never really. And I'm sure a lot of people who are listening haven't either. That's my second favorite movie of all time. You gotta give a little a like, one. what is it? You it's kind of like Afghanistan. Running out. Music is about the Von Trapp family. So it's a rich husband, Captain Von Trapp, and, and it's in Austria. Uh, but uh, set around time when Hitler was first um, getting everybody, you know, all riled up and stuff for best, better lack of, I don't know what to say. Anyway, so it centers on Maria, who is supposed, she's trying to be a nun, and she's trying to live that life, but she- That's on a not whim, a good fit for Gay Ann, though, Mara. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait, a stretch of imagination. So she gets uh, called to uh, what, to be a bear, no, not a baroness, <laughs> be the, uh, to be oh, the- goodness. Danny. to this family and she goes off it's supposed to be temporary and it's you know she goes and and there's seven children ranging from age 16 17 all the way on to five well, that and, busy. yeah very and 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 the father is gorgeous mm -hmm. freaking like hunk of a guy it was christopher, christopher Plummer. Plummer. Yeah. back in the day it was so Ooh. gorgeous really and he he lost his wife and it's been years and he doesn't want to partake with his kids much because it's just too he hasn't dealt with losing his wife and and the joy has gone out of his life and meanwhile these kids are estranged from him and they live in his house but he runs it like a ship you know he blows a whistle when they're all supposed to come downstairs he's really messed up so julie andrews comes in and they don't want to have governesses, these kids. They've had one after the other after the other, and they don't like it. So she comes in, and she just turns their everybody's life around, and they fall. she falls in love with Captain Von Trapp. They start singing they, again. But what happens? That they're bringing in music? I mean, what's going on? Oh, yeah. they bust into the most gorgeous songs, like it's a musical. So That's they, why they call it the sound of music? Yes. yes. They didn't have any music in their lives, and now they do? <laughs> Uh, um, almost, oh. you almost hit on it. You almost hit on it. They they had stopped with the music in their lives, and she brought it back. Right? Did you do a good job, guys. You did good. Yeah. You did well. You did very you did well. Great job. No, it's, all I'm thinking about now is Christopher Plummer. Wasn't he Liza Minnelli's husband? No, 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 no. Who am I thinking of? Well, which gay guy? Oh, Christopher Guest, right? <laughs> it's, it depends. Oh, Wh Guess which homosexual? Said, uh, I was picturing when you said he was gorgeous. No, Christopher, no, Christopher yeah. Guest. I think Christopher Guest is married to Jamie Lynn Curtis. Yeah. Jamie yeah. Lee, Lee yeah. Curtis. So I think, I mean, look, pick a gay guy. That's who Liza Minnella married and dated. Exactly. Liza Minnelli. Minnelli. You know, you know no. a Carrie Fisher also dated yeah. and married only gay men. Um, very interesting. It's very interesting. I thought it was interesting that Julie Easy Andrews, that Julie Andrews did two roles of governesses for Mary exactly. Poppins, right to the Sound of Music. She mm -hmm. won for the Mary Type Poppins, cast. but Mary I, Poppins. I wanted her to win so much for the Sound of Music. No, so, yeah. my favorite, although my favorite, favorite, favorite musical in the like hands down, it's a classic. 
My favorite is West Side Story. Me too. Uh, so yeah. I love West Side Story. Come on, Jersey girls, of course. I've seen that, <laughs> and I've seen the play of it too. So I do know what West Side Story yeah. is. Yeah. So I are you excited about the movie? Oh, heck oh. yeah! I think I'll go yeah. see it because you know my mom. You know my mom grew up in that era, and she loved West Side Story so much. She knew every single word to the thing. So when I was growing up, she would sing it at me and my brother and sister. <laughs> Not with us or to us, at us. So. We did it in high school. I played the sax, that, that line. Oh, you we, did? Yeah, I was in the orchestra. I, I did know. it in high school, and I played Anita. Yeah. So I... I <laughs> <laughs> I to, like to, to Mother be in America from Mother Superior, like yeah, for exactly from like right? none to whore. You know what I mean? Um, Lisa, what did I, you have I to say? I was going to say that I took the Sound of Music tour in Austria. Mm. So if you enjoy oh, wow. the sing along, wow. you can take it up a notch Girl. next oh. summer and do that tour. And you can go around wow. the gazebo. What do they take you through? You go up the mountain and everybody sings on the. No, they the don't. Bus. They, they actually sing. On the bus, everybody's singing. It's, it's the gayest thing. <laughs> but you have to do it if you're there. Right. The, the surviving Von Trapp and, and family. They, they take you around the lake because they filmed a lot of it here on the back lot. Right. But some of it was filmed there. So we went around we the lake. That. We went on the gazebo. So you can really take it up a notch. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Enjoy it. Thank you. Andy? It's sure. a wonderful holiday movie, too. Even yeah. though there's no holidays in the movie. I mean, I grew up with that as a kid. And it, it's just. It's I one of the know. best it's classics just, ever. I'm going to tell you, this show has become so gay. Go ahead. <laughs> Broadway musicals. <laughs> Andy. I was just going to say the Von Trapp family, the surviving members, uh, have a big. Uh, or what do you call it? a uh, big union place out in Vermont? They yeah. have a uh, that's inn right. that's still. If you want to go up and visit an inn in Vermont, wow, then, so. that's right. Well, mm. well, thank you. So, Andy, hold on. I'm looking at her book. <laughs> uh, hold on, Andy. Andy, hold on, Andy. Um, She's a dentist, the Pamela DeBar. I have a. You tell me your Pamela DeBar story. I'll share mine. <laughs> well, that's one of the audiobooks we worked on. Like you know, I'm with the band, so. I got to work with her closely, and we also went out clubbing one night and had a lot of fun. But um, that's, you know, just I did her stories. So. No, Pamela and, DeBar. And you heard all the stories in the studio. That's what I loved about certain jobs I had, because you heard all the side stories in the studio. Today. Exactly. And who is Pamela DeBar? Pamela DeBar, um, she was married to a musician, Michael DeBar. She also had a book. She's known for the most being the most famous groupie. Yeah, probably. she's a groupie. <laughs> I'm uh -huh. with the band, right? That's yeah, the book. That's I'm book. with the band. Yes. And I was introduced to her, God, five, six years ago by um, by who? By who? It was either Martha or Terry introduced me to her. And we had her on the show. And she was a hoot. I mean, like that's a, like you talk about stories. Like you'll she'll tell you everything. Yeah. And she was just amazing. And then she friended me on Facebook. And she has parties at her house. Well, she used to before COVID had parties yes. at her house. And I guess she was dating or she liked this one musician. So she would always do these house concerts with him. And so it was always fun because it was this eclectic G bunch. Jimmy of Page was her boyfriend. I mean, she slept with a lot of different Yeah, uh, slept with wow. a lot of musicians. people. Yes, she did. And yeah. God bless her. But she's yeah. still good looking now. She is. She has, she has a store and she's still, yeah, I can't believe how great she still looks. Yeah, like. she looks amazing. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm looking for another name. <laughs> hold on. Uh, Peebo Bryson. Anybody know who Peebo Bryson I is? Love yeah. yeah. yeah I know <laughs> when I was at BMG, I was very fortunate to work with a lot of my favorites growing up, uh, and Jeffrey Osborne and Peebo Bryson, and especially number one, Etta James. And I got mm. to work on five albums with Etta James. Wow. From uh, I was I was in A and R, and um, just had a great time. Did a lot of the business, but also went to the sessions and with her also her sons and mastering studios. So. Um, she was a kick, and to tell you the truth, you know, she's like, she was hell on, hell on wheels, I guess, and whatever the expression is. She um, was a riot, and I was so happy. I was at BMG when Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and everyone was coming up, and I just thought when I heard Christina Aguilera, I said, wait a second, with NSYNC, everyone was on BMG, BMG, and I thought, wow, she has this great voice. And then I learned about her that she loved Etta James, and I got the advanced CD of Genie in the Bottle before it came out, and I distributed it around because I just thought she had just great pipes and I heard she was a big Etta James fan so uh -huh. Mike I tell this to a lot of people because I feel like I, I connected the two I, I sent her CD to Etta and I forgot about it it was like three weeks later and somebody said I have a call and I went back to the office and I picked it up and Etta just said who we that hoochie coochie girl can sing <laughs> <laughs> and, Jersey girl and they and Christina, I know, wanted to do a track with her, and they tried to make it happen, but business people got involved 
with the monies, but I'm glad that they finally met before she passed. And when I went to Etta Jane's funeral, Christina sang. I think a lot of people were expecting Beyonce at the time, or yeah, or, she or sang Adele, at last, but, didn't she? Yeah, because she, yeah, she she was did. in she was in Cadillac yeah. Records, and, and I have Mara, the thing that you bring up. It, did you know that when um, Barack Obama got inaugurated? And Beyonce saying it, Etta James was actually very insulted about that. Do you guys remember that? I heard that firsthand, yes. yes. When Beyonce <laughs> sang Yes. So at his inauguration, Beyonce sang that song, and Etta was like, well, it's my song. Why didn't you ask me? And especially, she's been around way longer than Beyonce. You would think they would have given her that honor. I know. That's terrible. Hold on. Andy has the inside track here. Well, I was just saying, for, for a lot of people who think sometimes she was difficult to work with, and Etta, and she could. She could, like, just... Just, you know, blow off a studio day and three or five thousand dollars. There you go. She decided not to go. Um, but for she when we talked or when she um, actually interacted with women, she was always very respectful. And her story was to me, you know, Andy, that song has been my bread and butter for 60 years That's and, right. I'm, and I'm not gone yet. And she wasn't had she didn't have dementia yet. And yeah. for her to like, that's her signature song. Yeah. And and Beyonce Andy, I don't know if we've ever talked about this. Do you know Brian Ray, who was her guitarist? Uh, yeah. I know her lead guitarist of the last twenty five years, Josh Glare, who's Grammy yeah. winning. Yeah, but, I but, have, a, but I have jo stories on but that. Josh, but but another I'm, time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, Etta James. I mean, uh, look, I don't know about you guys. I mean, I'm fifty seven. Etta James. There was a club in the valley. It was a it's a dive, a lesbian dive in the valley, but it's it was home to me at the time. And you know, back in the day, they had the cigarette machine and the jukebox machine right next to each other. And, and when the, the axe went in, no, no, the, the club twenty two on oh. Lancashire. Okay. So every time, like you know, Monday through Thursday, there was no DJ. You know, it was like everything was jukebox, and you know. I swear, every five songs, it was like the same. It was like Melissa Etheridge, Etta James. Melissa Etheridge, Etta James. <laughs> Melissa <laughs> Etheridge. Oh, yeah, the one who sang Black Velvet. I forgot her name. Oh, Alana Miles. <laughs> Alana Miles. Oh, wait, KD Lang's come in. The thing. It's just, it was oh, like it, these, these same freaking songs were on rotation. But Etta James, always, 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 like a hundred times. And I could swear to you, it was always the last song that people mm. played before they left. Oh. Mm. She had my some of the greatest expressions. They kind of love might be my favorite song of hers. Excuse me? Which Sun song? Sunday Kind of Love. Oh. Uh, she, um, That's one of my favorites. She, you know, I love that song too. She didn't like to perform that song a lot because it hurt her voice mm. when she sang oh. it. She said, yeah. Really? Yeah, mm. that's what she told me. Wow. I mean, you know, the thing is, and as a musician, you know, I mean, there are some songs, because I mean, I managed a few people. There are some, they kept saying, like the fans, I want you to sing this song live. I want you to sing this song live. And, you know, some songs are not meant to, to be performed live. They're all like studio things. You right. know what I mean? And, yep. you know, <laughs> and it, I, I would hear like when we would, would like do the shows and then sit at the table after, you know, for the signings and stuff, the fans would always say, why don't you ever sing this song? And it's like, they, and I would never answer because it's not my business, but they would say, you know, oh, you know, it's just really, some of them are vocally, it's really hard to sing. And, you know, you don't want to perform it because everybody's expecting it to sound exactly mm -hmm. like the record. So they don't want to disappoint. Right. Yeah, yeah, she needs to, it just, it's got a really weird range, but... She, um, even before Beyonce, and let me say, Beyonce was always very respectful. We loved Beyonce and everything else. She was always trying to involve Etta, and Etta went. She, uh, Beyonce actually invited Etta right before Cadillac Records to see her perform it for the first time in concert and sent her own jet and, you know, t brought them over. And, you know, Etta went and, you know, put on her smile, and they eventually wound up singing together. But it's just hard. You know, it's very hard when it's your career and, you always have to have, I believe, a little bit of that ego in order to become famous. So, um, but I just loved, my favorite things was just closing my office door and talking to her. I actually was helping her with a project at the time at Rhino outside of her label, just because she needed some help with some things. And I couldn't believe they were making her do such manual things and, you know, these union reports in two hours I spent on the phone with her. And, you know, she would talk to me about uh, touring with Otis Redding and oh he was a fine man you know and, <laughs> and but but uh, the AR department they'd always have me talk to her when it was some bad news so I'd call up <laughs> and then she'd go hi oh, Andrew no. she goes she goes okay what is it she goes 
she goes, you a woman, you understand. She goes, I, I understand what you're going to, you know, they're putting you up to this, aren't they? You know, she, she was just always very, I just, her expressions were like, you know, she does say between you, me and the house cat, you know, just, just, <laughs> just <laughs> things that I just loved. And I actually tried, I wrote a little development thing and like others who were trying to pitch a documentary, I pitched it to someone I won't say and a few people and they were going to do it right when I also went read Cadillac Records was coming out before it came out. And I said, now's the time to do the documentary so you have it ready when the feature happens. And they were going to do it. But again, I kept getting these rejections because, oh, well, we hear she's too difficult to work with. And, and she wasn't. She wasn't. She just had good and bad days in her health. And that's it. But she there was so much there. And I'm so happy that so many artists, younger artists, really looked up to her when I really realized that from Adele. Mm. Uh, that's Adele actually said in, in a documentary, she said that um, even though she loved Spice Girls and you hear about all the other stuff, she said at 14, she goes, when she first played Etta James, she brought home Ella and she took Etta James because she liked her hairstyle and she just got that and took it home and listened to it. And she goes, from age 14, when I first listened to Etta James, I found my own voice through Etta James. Wow. So that's pretty powerful. I mean, absolutely. And when, and when you think about it, I mean, you know, all the music now is all fun and nice, but the classic artists, you know, I mean, Etta, Ella, Aretha, um, you know, and there's plenty, there's plenty of more that I just can't remember right now. But, um, but those, though, they really created a style. They really created a voice. I mean, you know, you could call Nina Simone, Patty um, LaBelle, Patty LaBelle uh, the one from England, Bassy, Shirley Bassey. Sure. Um, you know, you can close your eyes and listen. You can say, you can play one after another after another. And if you know music, I'm not saying, you know, like a 20 year old wouldn't know who the hell these people are, which is a damn shame. But mm -hmm. if you close your eyes and you listen, you can go, Nina Simone, Shirley Bassey, yeah. mm -hmm. Ella Fitzgerald, Etta mm -hmm. James. Now you close your eyes and you go, well, it could be Britney. Oh God! It could be. They sound oh, alike. What's that one? Yeah. Ariana Grande. <laughs> it could be Katy Perry. And it's not to say that these vocalists aren't talented, but it's very rare now to have someone who has a vocal sound and a style. Unique. Adele. Yeah. Adele. Yeah. Unique. Um, yeah. Christina Aguilera. Unique. Mariah Carey was unique. Yeah. Whitney. God rest yeah. her soul. Was well, unique. Stevie Nicks. I mean, you can't like Stevie yeah. Nicks. Her voice up. Um, yeah. What's her name? Annie Annie Lennox, yeah. my girlfriend. Yeah. Annie Lennox. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. You know, so, but it's very rare, and I think I have a Stevie Nicks story too. I want to hear it because I love her. <laughs> um, but as it's like music is now getting whitewashed. It, it, you know, it's just getting, it's just oh. blurring. It's like whatever the new sound is, everybody sings mm -hmm. some offshoot, and then they're <laughs> in the studio, and then they auto tune it and fuck it up and and then it's you got like, like bruno mars bringing the 70s back have you heard oh his new God. song he's oh amazing man, he's I, I, so mean, I feel like that was on the love boat or something yeah <laughs> which new song did he? which one you can't tell that new song it's like totally from the 70s i mean it, you turn the radio on and you didn't know it was him you would think you were transported back to the 70s right. no i i don't know which one you're talking about you gotta like google it <laughs> and then write bruno mars sounds like the 70s <laughs> I was the to, to me right now. to me bruno mars is one of the most unique male singers and true talents we have today um he just does everything plays everything and if you don't know this because most people do but you know he grew up in hawaii he's filipino part he's, he's a lot of different things but partially filipino but he grew up as a uh, elvis impersonator and you have right. to watch the videos of <laughs> him at, at five and six of him singing he was my hairstylist is his yeah. hairstylist yes well, my old hairstylist and, in los angeles was his hairstylist and a, a gentleman who i worked with at atlantic who i did teach a little bit on what I knew um, well he's now the president and um, he signed Bruno but I just remember wow when I, I started seeing him at the Grammys and, and before and I was just like wow it blew me away just well, nice okay, okay I have to say I so. love him. look I worked on the Grammys I've done CBS specials I've worked one-on-one -on -one with Bruno a lot so he is talented by no doubt here's my issue with Bruno and I don't know if it's necessarily him because I don't know who's calling the shots mm -hmm. but I find that he's become a caricature of himself, meaning he lo he's losing his own style and he's mimicking 
everybody else, like on the Grammys. He's, you know, he's he's um, doing Prince. I mean, it's like he's still he's doing that Elvis impersonation stuff. I agree and with he's you. I think he's I think he's so talented and I think he's losing who he is mm -hmm. and it's becoming sort of a joke. Yeah. My opinion, no, because no. he, you know, remember that one song he really got a hit with, you know, the "You're Beautiful." Remember that mm -hmm. song? You are beautiful, or how? Just the way you are. Just the way you are. Yes, I'm not a singer, but that was him. I think in his great prime, and like you said, Gay Ann, he's just like I mean, went, I mean, and I just googled it right now, and I put in <laughs> Bruno Mars, and guess what came up, Mara? Bruno Mars, and it automatically filled in 70s song. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm going to try that, Mara. And that I will. My favorite song of Bruno Mars, without a doubt, is Uptown Funk. I've never. It's a that great is song. the great best song, song but, one of the best songs but, I've ever heard. And and Nelly, who just came out with um, him and Blanco Brown, came out with High Horse, is the new Uptown Funk. That song's amazing. I agree with you, again. I, you know, I seem to take the unpopular musical opinion here often. <laughs> I, I know he's talented when we do talent, and I understand why people like him. But from the first time I saw him, I just saw all these people. And since that's not my thing, yeah. I didn't actually know that Andy that he was an impersonator. But it makes sense because I would see, I would see like, oh, this is Elvis. This is this. This is this. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. He's an amazing entertainer. But when we talk about somebody like Stevie Nicks or the, the, the signature, the vocal signature of, or musical signature, I never got that from him. And since that's just personally what I like, just personally, not better, um, I never felt that with him. I felt like he's unbelievably adept and dexterous at whatever. He can do anything and talent in terms of playing, dancing, creating. But, you know, Stevie Nicks is going to sound like Stevie Nicks. <laughs> but hold on, let me tell you something. Like Lady Gaga, okay? <laughs> Lady Gaga, she's phenomenal. I mean, I think she is. I think her vocal range. She's got a great voice. But I'm going to tell you, that's the difference for me between her and Bruno Mars, is that yeah. everything she comes out with is pretty freaking unique. Is still hers. Is still sure. hers. Yeah. And I mean, right. I, this is not a, Br I mean, look, Bruno Mars's people aren't I looking to this, but I work with them. So hi, I'm not bashing your client. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, and I don't know who routes them or him right. in this direction, but I think actually it's doing a disservice to his career. My but opinion he's only. But it all the way to the bank. Though, I, I, I understand. Absolutely. <laughs> but that's the he's, thing. And a true, but the thing is yeah. a true artist, at least the ones I've met, and I've met a lot of huge people it's sometimes it's not what their what their passion is is not necessarily what popular opinion is and they mm -hmm. will fight they will fight mm -hmm. i mean i can't tell you how many artists that i know fought with uh, record labeled as to mm -hmm. what the first single of the album was going to go out well, that was just like the song when i just watched the movie today respect when when Aretha Franklin was getting all those hits, then she said, I want to do a gospel album. And her record label was like, no, 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 fighting her, fighting her. And then it turned out to be the most famous album she ever did. Exactly. Hey, everybody. Think about Pat Benatar when she went to blues. Exactly. You know? I mean, Cindy Lauper, they all, they all transition, but it's usually later on in the career when they don't give a fuck. And they have that money well, in the bank. They have more power. Exactly. <laughs> hey, everybody out there, thank you so much for watching Between the Sheets podcast here on United Broadcasting Network. Please call in, 323-524-2599. We are always on. I'm not signing off yet, but I forgot to say this. We're on the first and third Friday of every month. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Bratton. Our show's always all over the place and on YouTube, 323-524-2599. So tell us your Stevie Nicks story, Andy. Okay. Uh I, I just wanted to acknowledge that I do understand what you guys are saying and the way I look at with Bruno is that he's doing a tribute because to an older genre that's sort of lost and in my sense I look at it like he does in a u unique way and he's also a phenomenal songwriter which is how he started and even wrote for Adele so there's more to him. Well that's what I'm saying you know I mean but that's what I'm saying he is so yes. freaking talented. Yes, but yeah. I, I understand yeah. what you were saying yeah. Yeah. because I differenti differentiate Stevie Nicks from Beyonce. I always think the artist's first album comes from their soul. It's their feelings. Mm -hmm. And then it shifts. But the true artist, like a Stevie Nicks, you're going to get that every time. Yeah. And that's the problem with today's music. 
It's not well, from the soul. There are some people like Billie Eilish that yeah. is, she, she's amazing. The stuff that she's putting out or Fiona Apple, you know, that come from their soul. I say Billie because she's the most recent um, and the youngest. Uh, but she's a different scene. from like a Dua Lipa. What's her name? Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. It's, she's different to me, oh, Billie no, Eilish. She's please. just... She was bringing up Dua Lipa, not me. I just, I just see the <laughs> Hold difference. On, Dua, I was this yeah. close to Dua Lipa. Well, actually, I was this close to her boobs because she's very tall. <laughs> um, Andy, can I say one thing? Can I jump in? Sure. Is that right? Of course. Okay. I wanted to ask you on, on that. Do you think it's uh, in terms of that true artist kind of idea, do you think it has something to do with the industry as well? Like, I'm curious your, your, your are you, opinion. Are you talking about the influence here on that? The influence well like, i mean you know if you have an artist and they can continue to keep having their like billy or whoever or, or stevie that there's something in the industry that's allowed that or some kind of deal or is it just truly that somebody's authentic thing can come through does well, that make sense i would love to have the always the authentic authenticity come through of course but i as knowing from working in record labels i know they're not always right and what you do is we have a roster could it be 100 or 200 artists and you hope that three of them score to carry the rest of them and we give some people a chance but sometimes you know it's such a lottery from the moment that somebody's helped picking the songs to getting out to promotions to radio play to advertising to so many different things that it actually makes it um, there's some great songs that you know are left behind somewhere that just never got mm -hmm. out there. But there is a lot of pressure from labels, and also because, like you, Amadeus, you know, I've I've several musician friends who you know hate the labels or the other things because they think you take up your life or this or that. And I'm always it's a hard position, but I'm always on the fence because I have to, like, um, I have to uh, mention that. If, but who's going to give you like a half a million dollars to yeah. basically put out yeah. an album? Is it, if you have a rich yeah. uncle, then you do that. But you take a chance, and a lot of labels, they don't realize you could be a $30,000 budget, but by the time it gets out there, it might be a half a million dollars with everything yeah. else. Yeah. So yeah. somebody's yeah. taking a big risk, and then when people say, I didn't get my royalties, well, you have to be yeah. successful and recruit those royalties. Well, yeah, and isn't it true? I mean, like, okay, so pretty much the record label is like a bank. Right. Okay, you. We will give this. We will invest in you, mm -hmm. and we will put this together. And then it happens, and the machine takes over. Mm -hmm. The artist truly doesn't make any money till the album makes money. That's right. Right. Because because doesn't right. doesn't and they does, recoup their advance. Yeah. Right. Because because they have to pay back the label sure. for right. all the money, and then they start making money. Sure. And it's and that is why I think a lot of artists have gone. Like independent, right? Yeah. Independent because, but then again, it's a trade off because you have this huge machine behind you pushing you. If you are successful enough to, you know, branch out on YouTube or any of the platforms, then, you know, you know, good for you. Um, I have I have different feelings on Billie Eilish. I mean, unique and stuff like that. But you know, personally, like music is subjective, right? And you, we all yeah. love. Like I love a big voice. So when she first came out, I was like, "What are you saying?" You know. Mm -hmm. And I had to read the lyrics, yeah, and I said, different. "They're like, they're like, okay, Mumbling. cool lyrics, but you know, it's just a different <laughs> style, and it takes off." And remember you know, Anita Baker? Yes. Who the oh, hell? Oh, I'm gonna tell you something. That woman had a belt. I, I mean, I saw her in Luther Vandross. Okay. Mm -hmm. And her right. album came out. And I swear to God, I liked her voice. Her songs were fabulous. I didn't understand one fucking word <laughs> she ever said. I would always look at the liner notes when I was w listening to the song because I didn't know what the hell she was saying. You know, it was like, it, it was like, what the hell is she saying? I mean, I, she's good, but I don't know what they were just fucking saying. I'm a Cocteau Twins fan. I don't think anybody knows. Oh, no, but Heaven or Las Vegas, you know? <laughs> That's all I heard. Heaven, I, I remember the chorus. Heaven or Las Vegas. And then, what the hell is she saying? Like, my favorite bands. <laughs> Michael. Jackson's human nature. That is it. I mean, you don't know what he's saying. And then you have Bjork, who's from Iceland. Yes, yeah. a lot of their favorite. But I, and Sugar Cubes, and like I, under, but I understood what the hell the Icelandic was saying. But Anita Baker, I couldn't understand one fucking word. <laughs> It's a style, and it, you know, people go into their own style, and yeah. it's, it's whatever sells. So I think to answer your question, Amadeus, it's just, you know, the label obviously is going to be concerned with money, and they might push yeah. an artist a wrong way that they think, well, or that uh, worked last yeah. time for that album, but I don't want to do mm -hmm. that same album. But they try and say, let's stick with the formula, and they don't want it. Right. So, so, so you know, I just I'm always rooting for the artist. I have been in labels and stuck up for the artist. I stuck up for an artist who I won't even get into it, but we got to how to give them some money because of what they were doing. 
And I just, I mean, I stuck up, I was like a director at the time and I went up to like some major vice presidents. And after that, they started calling me, um, what's it? What's a this? bitch? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I was thinking of. That's a woman who gets her job done. That's a woman who gets her job done. I'm just saying. Right, exactly, right. Marty. So, what was Sally Field's role in, uh, you know, the union worker? What's oh, um, at, at Norma Ray. Ray. Norma Ray. They would, no, Norma? Was it Norma? Norma Ray. Yeah, yeah. 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 so they come in and say, yeah, hey, Norma. He'd go, hey, Norma, I have a question. So that's what they start. Oh, really? Them. Yeah. Wow. So, so, but there's times when it's right. You have to be in the middle. Yeah. You have to understand both sides. But sometimes yeah. if an artist is successful and they can be unique, but it's just because it's so easy to make music nowadays, it becomes <laughs> much more competitive and you really have to stand out in some uh -oh. way. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to hear Stevie Nicks' story. I, uh, I was thinking of so many other stories. Okay, it's not a, like a huge. Well, Stevie we keep Nicks going story, back like four yes, yeah, times yeah, yeah, to yeah, Stevie Nicks. Okay. Let's get Stevie it Nicks just, gone and over. I'm, just, I'm just gonna do one little quick one. <laughs> it's just one little quick one. I was I was babysitting. I was like a because in the marina I was like a I was 11 and I was babysitting a baby because you know when the old days we all worked when we were young and did things, and I was babysitting a baby and my my. Uh, the uh, person's baby that I was uh, going to their condo on the beach. It was so beautiful, like one of these very high-end, beautiful places on the marina. Um, you know, I, I get out. I'm just we're parked, uh, and she goes, "Well, I'm not going to be able to use you very much more because we're going to be moving." And um, gee, I wonder. It was 1977, guys, or something. And they were saying, "You know, I don't know if you know who." Fleetwood Mac is <laughs> and I was like uh, yes and um, you know right there was standing with Stevie Nicks and Mick Fleetwood on the beach kicking around sand like 20 feet away in her white gown and him in his white thing and I, I look back at it now that must have been the time when they had their affair but she bought my babysitter's condo but I've been like a huge <laughs> fan since I was little you know since so that's it was just a small little story but Stevie Nicks <laughs> is a goddess yes, there yes, I mean that's uh, like, like Oh, just love her. Yes. She's yeah. still sexy. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I like them older. Okay, who else on your next list, Andy? Well, I was just thinking, here's here's another quick little story from Al Green. Remember Al Green? So um, we, oh, by the uh, way, Al Green, for those who don't know, remember that <laughs> song Tina Turner had a hit with? But it wasn't the first hit. It wasn't Private Dancer. It wasn't Better Be Good To Me. It was the third hit that she begged the record label. I heard Bad she begged. Bad City Limit? Nope. She begged. This was when she came out as Proud a solo. Mary? No, stop. She. <laughs> I'm trying to get in on this conversation. No, hold you on. Having between yourselves. No, no, no. She. Um, this was her first album, the solo after she broke up from Ike when she had that. What's whole love rebirth. got to do with Private it? What's love got to do with it? Thank you. No, no, no. She fought. I heard. <laughs> she fought to have this one, the single released, and the record label Capital was no, 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 and it was a song called Let's Stay Together. And that yeah. was a that was a cover. Oh, my, really? I mean, my generation. Well, I knew this, but some of my generation didn't realize it was a cover from Al Green. One of my favorite songs mm. of all time. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He was so amazing, and we, and like I said, I was so blessed at a time while we were expanding at, at BMG and we we're getting more soulful artists. And we had at this at the one time I got to work with Barry White on his last album before oh, he baby, passed. Oh baby, 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 baby. Yes, yeah, so oh. it's an, another a Virgo. Another. He Virgo. was the baby maker. He was, and he was really <laughs> That's into. That's right. I, it's true. He was really into astrology too, Amadeus. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, he he was so so much a Virgo that his company was named Virgo Inc. And Are you kidding? No, oh, you and, and he, I will talk he, later. He, on this. he loved the fact that he was working with me, and also his marketing. A friend of mine in marketing had the same birthday as him, so he was just <laughs> a, he just loved that. But um, and then we had like like you know Jeffrey Osborne, and and we had James Ingram. We had everybody, and we were also going to sign Al Green, and he was coming over as well as Roberta Flack and we were Oh my god Roberta oh, oh. But, killing but, me softly but, with his yes. song. Oh. But but Al Green came to my was in my boss's uh, office and I brought in my Al Green that when I grew up my mom played a lot of funk music and stuff and soulful music and I, I grew up on all the stuff and I loved it. And so I brought some uh, you know albums for him to sign and CDs. But he got caught <laughs> up. He was distracted uh, by my boss or somebody else calling and he was in the middle of signing something with a black, you know, permanent marker. marker. And well, first of all, I have his thumbprint on one of my things, which is kind of funny, because <laughs> he was like smearing it and talking to somebody. But, you know, he goes, hi, we were talking for a bit. And there's like, what's your name, baby? <laughs> so, you know, I told him and and so he was going on and doing the thing and talking. And then by the time I'm just so happy, I walk out with about five things that he signed after talking to him. You know, I wasn't even looking at it first. And I'm walking down the hall and everything says different things. But it says like 
love you, Audrey. Everything was Audrey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's another time when the label started calling me Audrey, all my friends. <laughs> So, but I, I gave it to an Audrey that I knew that actually liked Audrey. Oh, that's, so. that's a good story. <laughs> Sorry, Audrey. but I have a question for Lisa, actually. Yes, great, great, great. So, Lisa, I understand that you are into, that you specialize in real estate, and is it interior design? They kind of go together. Yeah. I, I like both, so, but more real estate than interior design. But we do so give our clients. Sorry. Go ahead. How did that happen? Did you is it something that you fell into or something you knew from a young age you wanted to do? Actually, I got into real estate for a weird reason. I just I suffer from Crohn's disease and I was down in my bed for about a year and I wanted to sell my house and I said I'm going to do this myself. So I studied and I went with my little handicap pass down to the convention <laughs> center. The whole convention center was filled with people taking their test. And I took my test, and I passed my test, and that's how I started 20 years ago. Wow. But um, interior design kind of goes with it because wow. I like the high-end properties, the luxury properties. So I like a house that's going to sell where you don't want to take a thing out of it. It's gonna, You would ruin it mm -hmm. if you put your own shit in it. So, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of go hand in hand. So do most of the houses, so the houses, when you sell, the, are they furnished already or they're empty and you sometimes furnish them? Sometimes they're empty, sometimes we stage them. You stage them. You need a good stager. I mean, so let's say I buy, let's say I look at a house and you stage it and I really like that freaking furniture. You can buy the furniture. You buy the furniture, okay. Yeah, you can always buy the furniture. But what did you do before real estate? Uh, insurance and annuities. <laughs> Was that, when did you move out to California from Jersey? I moved, actually took a pit stop in D.C. where I worked in the Pentagon. Nice. And I left cool. in 1993, and I went to San Francisco for 12 years, started real estate, and then moved to Los Angeles in 2002. That's it? Oh, you've only been here not, not 20, that long. Year, almost 20 years. Wow. Now, what made you make – well, I know <laughs> – I, this is a stupid question. I was like, now what made you make the move from New Jersey to California? <laughs> <laughs> no brainer. I, don't, I think I know that answer. But a really, woman. A woman. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to get into the entertainment business. A woman. Yeah, not entertainment. Isn't it always a woman? So yeah, how did that happen? Why don't you tell us about this well, story? Well, I had to move to Sacramento. Yeah, I just followed people <laughs> around. Kim's family lives up here, and then bye-bye L.A. that I lived there 20 years. Now I'm here. I was a stalker. I just followed people. <laughs> I followed people across the country. I fo followed people out of the country. So. <laughs> Don't get on so my liking list. <laughs> end up in your backyard. Well, now you're happily married to Mandy. You have two beautiful children. Right, and their music... It, for a 13 to 14 year old boys, it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. You right. have to listen to it. I don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's terrible. <laughs> I, I think there's just so much of it, right? And you just like. But there's so much bad of yeah, it. Yeah, See, th that's, I mean, that's, bad. that's why. That's what yeah, there's so were made much for. bad of it. I mean, that's I have it. to say, I have done the Grammys. I've worked on the Grammys, Country Music Awards, for 30 years. I've been to every single one of them. 30 years, and uh, like last year in COVID, we actually did do the award show. It was a very interesting format the way we did it. But I do have to tell you, in 30 years, I sat there and said, who the fuck is this? <laughs> who is this yeah. per Who's the bunny? I don't know who the bunny oh, is. The bunny? Oh who, the, who the hell is the bunny? <laughs> or, I mean, I knew Cardi B. I knew her. Well, and I'm like, but who the hell is Megan B. Stallion? It's not the, yeah. it's the Stallion. And I knew Dua Lipa only because a few years ago on the Grammys, she sang a hot duet with St. Vincent that I was like schwitzing over. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so that's how I knew Dua Lipa. But there were people on it that I had no idea. And the funniest story I have is I, they're saying, oh my God, Megan, the younger people, the younger people, Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B could perform the WAP song. I said, the what? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, I said, what? The WAP song? The WAP. I'm, a, I'm Italian. What, I, what? what the fuck? The WAP song? <laughs> the Nene song. Yeah, and they said, no, the, 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 the WAP song. And you didn't song. realize it would be even more offensive, right? I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> and you know I am very open minded. You know, I'm probably trashy. I'm like good and trashy all at the same time. And I sat there, and they're like saying, but Gayan, you're so like hip, cool. You don't know the WAP song? I said, <laughs> what does it stand for? 
And what ass pussy? What? Oh, well, oh, yeah. Thank what you. ass? What <laughs> ass that pussy? That is what it stands for. That's what it stands for. They, I wasn't gonna say it. They thank said, you. "Hold on, I gotta show you." Someone's guys gotta say it. Yeah. <laughs> when they, right? I mean, when what other kind of pussy is there? Hold right? on. When they <laughs> told pussy? no, when they no, told like, me that, when they told DLP. me that the name of the song. <laughs> when they told me the name of the song. It could be Dop. Stop, 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 dry old pussy. You got Hold on. Just keep quiet. I have something to show you people. You've been talking all Vicky, the time. Vicky, it's my show. <laughs> mother, mother, mother Superior uh, is talking. It's my show. It's my I'm show. And I'm, I know. And I'm a very interesting fucking person. Right. So, okay. um, <laughs> as we all are. So, they told me the, what is it? Wet ass pussy, right? That's it. And I said, I've never heard of the song. They go, well, you've been under a fucking rock? I said, maybe. So, we're in the lobby. And that's where we're staged, right? Because of COVID, we had, they put they pulled it up on YouTube. I sat there oh <laughs> like this, literally. Yeah. But wait, which version did you watch, Gay? The, the explicit one, from the one. No, no, the real one. The the, the video, the real video. Oh, right? Okay, I don't think I've ever seen that. And I was like this. Yeah. Oh, that was nothing, honey. She I was like, Grammys. oh my, I was she like at the Grammy. No, I know. Yeah. I was like, I mean, literally, my I, my mouth was like insane. And I said, I can't, how, what are they going to do with this on the show? Because it was like, it was really kind of a lot suggestive. <laughs> and so they did the rehearsal. And what they did, obviously, for broadcast standards and practices, they did it. It was stupid. What they did, it shouldn't have been done. If you're not going to do it the right way, don't do it because it completely lost it. Half but auntie. after they performed it, one of the things they're in, she's in like a shoe or some shit, and they're blowing money around. And I just want to show you, I have an official. <laughs> Some props. Wet, wet <laughs> ass pussy. What? What hey. ass pussy money? <laughs> we 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 took. It's there. It's like a hundred dollar bill. Whap, whap, and whap. Oh, eBay oh, items. Wow, that was that was one of the bills that was two. I have two of the bills. Two of the bills that was skimming like, across yeah, their bodies. Yeah, you could just go into a dark room and throw it up at yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but but Dan, I yeah. understand exactly what you're saying though. Um, I've been a member, a voting member of the Recording Academy oh. for many years, and um, been many times, multi multi digit times. I mean, um, many. Many times, and I was just thinking the same thing last year, or am I losing it, or I'm getting too old for this, no, when you start, um, you know, forgetting the names or not even knowing them, and I, that's one of the things also for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year, you know, I really wanted to go, it's in uh, Cleveland, I'm still debating about it, but it's sort of like these people are, you know, unfortunately departing, and it's really tough, yeah. because some of the best music ever, and I'm just wondering, it's generational, I'm sure every generation is, but, says that. But they're copying yeah. us, yeah, yeah, yeah. because we had yeah. OPP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Other people's yeah. pussy, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this has been going on. My kids think they're cool with all this crap, but we've been doing it way back. And but Vicky, I wanted to say that I worked with a lot of great Leos that led it, and I was sort of like their backup person. So just just for you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Who else? Who else? Tell us more, Andy. Tell us more stories, mommy. Oh no. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't who know. is the biggest diva? <laughs> Good question. Ooh. Diana well, Ross. Isn't this funny? Like, that's what I was Quiet. saying. Like, most people would say Etta. But I actually worked with somebody that you would never know that had a small album, a $30,000 deal. And she thought she was Stevie Nicks. She looked very good. And she wanted her whole photo shoot taken over. I mean, it just, it was so amazing. I spent so many hours after work on the phone with her like a therapist <laughs> um, because she just kept, she was kind of producing her own album and I, over and over, but you know, to bottom line is that we didn't, you know, renew her contract because no one wants to deal with that and you have to be, you just have to be a person to work with and a nice person and, um, but Andy, it's- Andy, that, seem, that seems to be it. I mean, you know, you've got to be able to work with these people, right? right you've right. got to find, you know, it is a personality thing too, right? Right. You know, people have to want to work hard or, you know, have a maybe good ethic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, divas. I mean, look, this is the thing. I worked with Janice Ian. Oh, my God. And, you did? Um, you met her? I mean, yeah, I worked look, with her on an album. When stuff did she? And um, 
here's the thing, Janice, that's another, that's another therapist, is really, really tough. I would get emails sometimes that just like I read profanity first and I said, oh shit, what did I do, you know? <laughs> and I'd read through the whole thing, but it would be like really, actually there's some of those that would be really good, like thanks for fucking sticking up for me and doing this. You know? So <laughs> so it's sort of like, but it's, so I always thought the thing with Janice Ian, who I still adore to this day, and by the way, a trivia, a uh, little piece of trivia, she was the very first artist ever on Saturday Night Live. Um, Billy Preston performed on the same show, but she was the highlighting musician. So wow. there's a little oh, that song question. at oh. 17. See, but mm -hmm. resonate when I was a kid because I don't even know what year it came out. So I don't even I know I was young when it came out, and you know I was you know I spent my money and my parents' money on a lot of um, vinyl. I've got albums and albums. I mean, my house in New Jersey is like a moratorium with albums, and I remember as a kid, you know, it probably was that age where I think. We all feel that awkwardness, that transition where sometimes we don't fit in. And I remember playing that song and it just was like, oh my God, she's talking about me. Mm -hmm. She's talking about me. And I think that was the sort of the voice of a, of, of a generation of, of, I wanna say coming out, but I, I don't mean gay coming out. It's just coming out and coming into who you are. Well, so mm -hmm. at the same time, Tapestry. See, I, I grew up, what oh, was amazing okay. is I grew up, and Janice and at 17, and Tapestry came out at the same time, mm -hmm. and my dad, my parents just got divorced, and my, my dad was so depressed, and that's all he played, so I guess that's what <laughs> I <laughs> love. Tapestry? Yeah, tapestry and Janice and so uh -huh. I grew up. But but Janice and the one thing, funny thing about her is, is her personality is, you know, she's like four foot nothing, and she's really strong-willed and very, the most intelligent person you ever met. And um, she was actually, she did an album like, you know, about the F FBI, one of these <laughs> things, because they were actually following her at a time oh, and, and is investigating her. She, she is so smart, but it's so funny because she has this really strong personality, but when she talks and plays, it's like going to heaven. It's like angelic. Mm. Her voice is still, right. and she's one of these artists, as you get older, your voice changes. Like Stevie Nicks, actually, you could tell it's very like much lower than it was when she was younger. But her mm. voice sounds the same and just so still so beautiful. But you know what? I mean, Carol King. I yeah. I worked one on of my show. favorites. I worked on a show. Got a long time ago. Sharon Glass show. Uh, Trials of Rosie O'Neill, and Melissa Manchester and Carol King did the theme <laughs> song. Mm. And I remember um, Carol had a house or recording studio in North Hollywood. And I remember, uh, you know, I'm like. We have to have a photographer there. Did we really? Would we use the shit? No. We have to have. So, of course, I wanted to go fucking meet them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I mean, that was part of my thing. And they are like, yes, you could have a photographer there. So we went in. <laughs> and, you know, you, Carol's tiny, too. Right. You know, Car Melissa Manchester's taller. Carol's tiny. And then she's from New York. So it's like. <laughs> and she is so the most undemure person. Like, she's like the complete opposite personality wise of Janice Ian and she I mean she was just so much fun and she was so normal and mm -hmm. I remember you know she invited like I don't know about a couple weeks later we all went over her house for dinner and then we would go like every other week for dinner and she was cooking and I'm like I want her to sign my tapestry album <laughs> how do I get her to do that because you know you were, I'm a professional so you don't go hi can you send my album at least that's what I what I didn't want and I remember I was sitting there with a friend that, you know, Lorna, who was um, her person, and I said, I really want her to sign my album. It's in the trunk of my car. I did, go get it. And she's like, <laughs> Carol, Gann's been waiting for like three months for you to sign this album. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. But, you know, it is, you know, but then again, now, you know, because look, we all grew up 80s. Are you, are we 80s kids here? Like, yeah. did we come of our own during the 80s? Yeah. There was a lot of good music and there was a lot of shit music mm -hmm. in the 80s too. Let's not bash the new stuff. I, but I think each each decade up until the 80s <laughs> produced unique voices. The 90s were a blur. I mean, for me, I, it's like, I, like who in the 90s I, was famous? Like, really famous? Because there was a lot of one hit, one of Melon, bomb. you know. Cranberries. No cranberries, those people, but, yeah. But, but no, yeah, I always say to me, like, the biggest for me, you know, and it could have be a few years either way, but like 64 to 82, that's what I always say was like the most fantastic music because, you know, people knew music theory and it was fully orchestrated or bands or this or that. But, you know, and it became so, again, so much easier to make music without even having to read music yeah. and things like that. So there's just one of the reasons. Who's your I think favorite? technology has so much to do with it. Yes, I mean, yes, absolutely. You know, uh, in terms of being able to make different things and the channels of the industry. I mean, the channels were so narrow, you know, and then you had to play instruments. Right. And, you know, I love to program drums. It's something I love, so I'm not I'm not against it. But when, when you open all that up and there were more channels to do things, 
and you could be signed to different labels, which didn't happen. I wasn't allowed to do that. That's why you don't know where a lot of my music is. It's on a, it's on a shelf. <laughs> but when, when you are allowed to have different avenues and the technology change to be able to replicate things, sample music and do things, um, uh, it changed, you know, it changed a lot. You know, the, the curation, let's say, of music. Absolutely. What I miss in today's music that I rarely hear, like that was very prevalent in the 80s, was the saxophone. Um, <laughs> I love the saxophone. You're right, Mom. Uh, the saxophone, like Huey Lewis in the news, and, you know. Does anybody, remem- Does anybody remember Candy Delfer? Nope, never even heard of her. You no. should look her up, Vicky. Vicky, she's a wonderful female saxophonist. Really, well, really. Or, or Mindy A. Beer. Okay, I, I never heard of her. She's like a huge he, person. Like, like all Grammy the best winning. songs had a, had this high energy yeah. sax yeah. in them. You know, you know, music is missing that, Mario. Yeah. You're right. East Street Band. Like the horn sax, yeah. you know? oh, and the cowbell. Oh God! <laughs> More cowbells. More cowbells. Ca- where's the t- where's the tam- where's the tambourine? We could have our own band. Yeah, right, right. I have to say, a lot of toms, a lot of tom drums. Do you know what? I mean, there's a soundtrack that I, I mean, and it's old. It's an old movie. It's an old movie called The Fabulous Baker Boys. Yes. Mm-hmm. And oh, I have I to it. say that that soundtrack Bridges. was amazing. Right. I thought so. Yes. Just and, saying. And uh, Jeff Bridges' daughter is a musician, actually. Oh. Yeah. Which I can segue to what I also was working on in the recent years, a, uh, a nonprofit, uh, my friend who I grew up with. Hey, uh, girls, I have to interrupt. I got to cut out of here, okay? Oh. So, hey, it was nice to talk with everybody. Yeah, have thanks. a great night. Yeah. Good weekend. Love you guys. Gan, thanks for having me. Thanks, Vicki. Thanks, thanks Vicki. I think you're all your stories, guys. Thanks, Vicki. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Vicki. I'll, I'll just be quick. Yeah. But no, no, we have another 20 minutes, so. But um, my friend uh, is is the CEO of this uh, company, and she's been defending public health uh, and non-smoking rights for many years. And it's really funny. Um, some people, you know, are, and I'm in the music industry, so, you know, sometimes weed is fine, but not like cigarettes because it's just gross. You know, like a lot of people just don't like that smell. There's different types. So she um, created, you know, with me and another friend, three of us, um, a project, um, I'm, I guess I'm a co-founding consultant for Smoke Free Music Cities. Um, there's statistics that came out about three years ago that even if you're not a non-smoking musician, and we forget about the people, this is before COVID too, who are on the corner street playing in their bar and that's their source of their income and they play every night. Um, even if they don't smoke, every half an hour that they're in their s- that smoke yeah. is equal to having one cigarette. Yep. So there's a lot of statistics and people getting ill. So I uh, worked with them to help bring on musicians for quotes we during covid especially now it's a big issue but we did a lot of music videos and shout outs and on behalf of the oregon i that's why i spent all last year editing about 60 music and what's the name of this organization smoke free music cities and what's the zip the zip code the um web web page yeah web page it's smokefreemusiccities.org city c-i-t-i-e-s and there's a there's a a guitar a guitar pick a guitar pick so i can play my 12 guitars that i don't Um, know but how to play, but it's I have them. One of the projects I've been working with for many years, but Jesse Bridges is a musician, Jeff Bridges, that's how I tied that in, oh, but okay. she, she was on board and gave us a quote and a friend of the CEO's. So what I are you working no on right idea. now? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Amadeus. I was gonna say, I had no idea. Now this is a deep passion of mine. Not, I don't mean to keep cutting in, but um, I got sick, you probably know that, right? From cigarette smoke at no, the I, beginning I of my didn't, career. didn't know that. And I couldn't perform. And I, this, is, this is like for years. Um, because of the amount of smoke in an enclosed space, that's intense. Well, we'll get you on no there. Idea. Yeah, I had no idea you were doing that. <laughs> that's have, amazing. Have to give us a quote, and we'll get you up there. I'll get you up there. I'll totally do on, a quote website, because it, it tanked my being able to perform, and I, I try to explain it. It's different than even being around cigarette smoke when you're inhaling and singing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's – sorry to interrupt, but that's what <laughs> Kathy Gifford was – isn't that her name? Kathy Griffin? Griffin. Griffin was just talking about recently about when her comedian uh, times being in a smoke-filled room all those years. That's you where know? we're wondering because really she just had her lung removed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's where I heard it. Sorry to interrupt. So what pro- what projects and stuff are you working on now, Andy? Uh, now I'm in between things, but I am also working with uh, my friend is a musician with heart and the girls. Oh, and oh my God. And he uh, – He's, uh, you know, doing this mentoring program and uh, has started this thing and I'm being brought into it and nice. it's called musicality.com and, you know, just sort of getting high end 
people like musicians from heart and you know all of us to mentor others because it's a little bit more pricey but it's cool if you can get advice or somebody from somebody who's actually you know big in the industry so. which is the one was it nancy or ann the one with the dark hair Anne. she was hot yeah she grew the one with the voice i don't know if she was she was hot she's performing her. i love nancy i love Nan her voice nancy <laughs> nancy's both here Oh my God, and Chrissy Hind. Look at this. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's now that is a diva. Mm -hmm. Now that's a diva. Now that yes, is, is a diva. I, I met her, but <laughs> me too. But, but from the, I don't know if you saw, like you know, just the interruptions at the, with social media. You know that, and that's yes. been highly publicized. But I found it really disruptive when I saw a concert and she interrupted it, not exaggerating, about twelve times to stop, stop taping me, stop. The, you know, yes, and she well. goes, "Get him out of here." This and that. I'm just like. You know, it just got to the deep point where it was ridiculous. So. Again, I'd sleep with her, but I won't go to her <laughs> concerts anymore. <laughs> but, but one of the most unique voices of all time, too. Another unique voice. No, I, that's what I'm saying. Like I mean, Karen Carpenter, all these great people that have these yeah. unique voices. Oh, that's my favorite. Karen Carpenter, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Can we have a what discussion a about a band that I never particularly liked, and I don't, still don't understand why they became famous? Bread. Oh, <laughs> that's a great I poem. love bread. I did too. Oh, I my did sister too. loved bread. I'm like, bread, are you kidding me? I love bread. That was like, I was more of a rock and roll kind of one of the first gal. songs I played on the guitar. So Which bread. one? Bread? I've never heard of bread. Bread? Bread. Oh, bread. bread. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, like God. A, these are a labor or something. I don't know. Just, <laughs> just, before your time. just write it down, Mara. And after, just. Like, I was born in 75, so I got to look Yeah, up they were a little bit. They were around. That's about when they were popular. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You still could have heard them. Bread. I never bred. I mean, the Carpenters were good. I just thought they were weird looking. Um, <laughs> and my favorite song was Superstar. You yeah. know what I mean? I just, that was like my favorite song. Um, Captain and Tennille, I thought they were fun until they did that song about muskrats. I, 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 <laughs> muskrat love. Muskrat love. I, I didn't, um, you know, who did, they did Love Will Keep Us Together, right? Which is a Neil Sadaka yeah. song. Neil Sadaka song. And I loved, and I was so used to Neil Sadaka singing that because I was a Neil Sadaka fan, I must say, at the time. But oh, it was just no, so that's great. great. The <laughs> 70s, you know, the 70s had great rock, I thought rock bands, mm -hmm. but the 70s was very schmaltzy. Very schmaltzy. Yes, and it is bread is schmaltzy, I would yeah, say. Yeah. No, I was a romantic, it's you know. So. But it was melodic. And Lisa, <laughs> what's your favorite music? Me? Yeah. Yeah, you. I you like, got you're a critic about your kids' music, I'm so what do you like? I'm a fan of love. I like soft oh, stuff. Oh, there you go. Okay. Like, if I look back to that, I like um it was just on my head. Go ahead, sing it. Uh no. <laughs> I like Dan Fogelberg. I like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, see? Exactly. Yeah. That's, what that's, the fuck is wrong job. with you people? I was like the girl. I was like, ACDC. No. Well, we're from Jersey. You're supposed to like, you know, Aerosmith. Led Zeppelin. You I was know? listening to but, Jethro Tull. But in music industry, and, and I still have some friends that wanted to break into it, like, you know, they'll talk to me about it, but like, oh, but I hate country and I hate this. You, I don't have, to like be, you have to be really open mm -hmm. and yeah. learn that there is good in everything. And I loved yeah. ABBA to Zeppelin. That's I loved amazing. ABBA. I, yeah. I went to ABBA's so, first, yeah, so. first and only U.S. concert. So just to be open. Wow. But I'll tell you something, country music. Yeah. It's big. Never been a fan. You know, never yeah. because, not because. Once in a while. Well, but I never did until <laughs> I started working on the Country Music Awards. And then, oh. I, and then I started meeting the people. And there's nothing more, there's, not, there's, a, there's a group of people that are so nice and they reside in the country music area. You've got some assholes, yes. But for the most part, they're just really nice people. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I met the, like, last Grammys, the Br Brandy Carlisle. Sang Brandy. With, yeah. uh, what's her name? Um, she sang with the old country artist. Was it Tammy Wynette? No. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Tanya, Tanya, Tanya Tucker. Tucker. Tanya, Tanya Tucker. Tucker. And I remember on the red carpet, I went up to say hi to Brandy, and she was standing she next to her. She loved Tanya. Oh, my God. She was standing was next to her, and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I realized I really liked the old country artists. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, Patsy Cline. Patsy Cline, Johnny, that's who I was thinking. Johnny Cash. Dolly Parton. Yeah, Dolly Parton. Oh, my God. I mean, I've okay. got many stories about Dolly. I'm sure Lily you do, too. It's the lyrics that are just so hilarious, you know, or Travis, Travis Tritt, whatever. You know, like, here's a quarter, call somebody who cares. You know, there's just so such brilliance in some of the lyrics, and that's what I've come to appreciate a lot of their songs. But, but again, I don't like that area of country Twang. music. No, I like Twang. You like Twang. I've actually become a fan of Twang. Okay. What I don't like are the making country pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what's her yeah. name? The guy Swift. In the voice. Swift girl. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. Yeah. And the other blonde. What's her name? The one, uh, Carrie. 
So Underwood. I, Underwood. So I was in the second. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. in the second she, row when Taylor Swift. When Taylor Swift performed with Stevie Nicks at the mm-hmm. Grammys, and I was on the side. And, and granted, that was her first year. Or was it thirteen or whatever the yeah. album was? And I was just so not impressed, you know, no. because at that time I've grown to like her in a different way. But but I just was so imp- unimpressed. Well, like Beyonce, <laughs> yeah. like Beyonce came from that girl group. What the hell was the girl group? Um, Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child. There's a story about that too. And and the thing is, <laughs> I mean, the, the one year of the Grammys, they were pairing up these icons with these new kids, and. Um, and Tina Turner performed with Beyonce, yes. and I have to say that was a showstopper. But yeah. go ahead with, but I, I don't find Beyonce that good. No, and I there's, really a, and like there's a story there with Aretha too, because when Beyonce announced her, she said, "And here's the queen," and Aretha got upset. So if you, I don't know if you caught that, mm-hmm. they they announced her. She said, "Here's the queen," mm-hmm. and so the queen. You Why know, is she the queen? Is she the only queen that was? Well, she's the queen oh. of soul. So what's oh. Tina? I don't oh, know. Oh, the queen of soul. So right, Aretha, right. so Aretha commented on that. But anyway, it's just a quick story. Uh, we had a very new beautiful when I was working at B&G beautiful woman start working with us and my boss said I'm going to put her with you to learn the ropes and do things and she was my last and we just grew to be fast friends we just you know still Facebook today today loved it and I just remember her dragging me she goes Andy Andy I don't know it's like 98 or something she says you have to come down the hall you have to come down the hall into the conference room I have to show you my my uh, cousin she's got this new group and it's my first cousin and and so we went down to watch it, and it was Destiny's Child, and, and Beyonce was her first cousin. And she was my – the work person I worked with was so beautiful that um, during the Grammys, all the head, the German heads would come over from BMG, and <laughs> that she, two years in a row, and because of my friend, not myself, but – in the office would say, come with us. And we were like saying, oh no, we can't, we have to go home and shower. And they're like, we buy you dresses and you know, whatever. And, and me and love uh, you a long time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, exactly. But I know it was because of my friend, but anyway, she's just as beautiful. And I just think Beyonce probably is a, and she's a Virgo, but be- Beyonce yes, is just is. a be- beautiful person, I think. No, she's just, a nice person. Just, but yeah, yet again, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think her music is lackluster now. You know, she listen to Lemonade because a lot of people say that she was lo- – I agree with you, but I never listened to Lemonade, and my sister said that that was the album that put her on the map as, as versatile. I guess she does even does a country song on that, yeah. so – I love like all the on the singles late all single ladies. I like and, that one and I'm stuff not, like that. That was like yeah. I mean, she does have, have some good songs. Good. It's just yeah. but know, but voice wise, my friends were, my friends were arguing like, doesn't she have like one of the best voices of all times? And I said no, I wouldn't put that there. I would she, I've seen her very closely perform. I think she's a great performer. I think she when I first saw her, she opened up for Destiny's Child's opened up for Christina Aguilera. I went to the very first concert they ever had, oh, and oh, and yes. and I just thought when I saw her, I thought oh my god, and I had just because I do background and stuff and I'm in SAG after I also I've been on sets but close to beautiful people and I just but I I forgot the uh, woman that I'd been just close to I completely I thought she was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen but Beyonce was just I thought my god she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen at that time I just thought she was just beautiful and her mother's but, pretty good looking but, just yeah, saying but but her um you know I love her but she's not one of my top 10 artists and I wouldn't consider her like when I think consider Christina or Pink or just the, uh, the oh, songs Pink. or or, I Ed, miss or Etta Pink. James or you know what Aretha I miss, Franklin. I, know, no, I, I miss Pink still there no I know no, but she hasn't. I mean, I, she, she hasn't did done something anything. the other day. Pink, pink, pink the she? Olympic people. Yeah. Yeah. she paid their fine. Yeah. Right, that's the Olympic. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. she, like I'm talking about, I miss Pink, Pink. Yeah. Like at the Grammys again, when she did that song. Remember when she was uh, like suspended? In the will, and, yeah. Oh dear yeah. Jesus! It's like I it's love dark. you even more. And that's when yeah. I was I was up in the second row, and what I thought was very funny is I was watching the people. Um, I don't know if you remember, but what you didn't see on TV is when she was coming back towards the stage because she's dripping wet. Uh-huh. It's like all the artists, you don't see them, but they're freaked <laughs> out. They've got their, you know, $10,000 hairdo and they're like, they're like, don't <laughs> drip on my parade. Got, it's so funny. They're holding things over their head. Got pinked. Yeah. Got pinked. So, <laughs> so, but Andy, who is your, like, you know, um, upcoming artists? Like, who, who, I mean, who is your, if you had to project, this is a good artist, L- you know, listen f- listen out for them. Is there anyone that you actually really enjoy right now? I'll probably remember on the way home, but I've just been trying to listen to a lot, and I'm not just impressed. Nothing really stick sticks out with me a lot, and that's why I feel like, God, am I, you know, getting old and – but you know, there's people like there's. I still, you know, waiting for that Adele album, uh, album again. I'm still, mm-hmm. I'm still, you know, th- and I think it's been, you know, too far. It's almost five years, but or it has been five years. But I just, um, you know, want someone that 
like what you mentioned, you want a good song. It's like a mini film, and Amadeus will appreciate this. It's <laughs> it's the lyrics. It's everything has to be. It's good production, good voice, good song. Yep. But it, it's that's what Universal is. Universal music. It has to move you and move many people that they can relate to. And I don't care who does it. And I don't care if it's like a Billie Eilish. But if it's that one great song, I'm, you know, that's what's gonna do it. And I, so like I love all types of music, but I just want it to be. You know, a certain standard, good, and not just flushing this out because it's got these beats. Hold on, I'm gonna look at the notebook really so, quick. Oh no, no, no. Hold on, please. <laughs> Hold on. I don't, I don't know. There's stuff out there. Mm, I'm just looking to make sure we got it because we only have a few minutes I, left. I worked in animation with the voices with the Looney Tunes, so that helped. Oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. No, so I produced the kids album for Space Jam, and oh. and um, so I was involved. I was on the Warner's lot for a year, and part of that, even before that, I worked with some producers who were producing other albums. And I got to spend a lot of time in the studio with like the voiceovers of the Animaniacs and the oh, Looney that's Tunes. That's so much fun. And Aww. it's so great. It's so great to watch Bugs Bunny mm -hmm. or Daffy Duck. These guys, they get really get into it and like, you know, with their carrot or, you know, and it's like it's, they, they morph into the character. And, and I bet you there's fun. no divas in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the greatest thing. They have so much fun with it, you know, and it's funny. I was talking to the guy and sometimes they double over like he's Porky Pig and Yosemite Sam or something <laughs> like that. But it's sort of like the Porky Pig that guy. Like, gets who he is and he was yeah. like and he was <laughs> like and he said he grew up wanting to be porky pig which is a really you know strange <laughs> idea but but you know it, it's lucrative you know, out of all looney tunes i can't say that porky pig would have been the first on my list to aspire to be <laughs> and he was born before uh before bugs bunny you know when you work for warner brothers in a creative position you have to go through at least a week called their boot camp and you learn how to draw for the characters and listen and what they would say and what they wouldn't say and everything audio. And I was really there at a great fortunate time when they were just taking over Hanna-Barbera studio. So we also went to mm -hmm. Hanna-Barbera. So oh. I met the animation, the Japanese. Wasn't that on Coenga? Yes. Yeah. I met the Japanese animation man who created Scooby-Doo and, <gasps> and, 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 Scooby and Astro. And we were taking, he was drawing, we were taking his things home, you know, his little the sketches self? and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He was just sketching and this is how. So you went through all this and that's what's so great. And you learn and they have these cards. This is Porky Pig's birthday and this is it. So you learn. It's really like, it's really intense. And what I was saying for audio or whatever, they have to, if there's a commercial, they have to employ the d person that's designated through Warner Brothers. They can't just get any porky pig. Oh, wow. So it becomes like a competition and it becomes very lucrative for somebody to go after that. So Wowzer. Yeah, so. yeah, I remember CBS, we did some stuff with Hanna-Barbera. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I have, I mean, I, I don't know, if a cr I have cells, like cells of some of these things. Yes. And, and they were like buried in my closet somewhere in the mood. And I'm like, what the fuck? What am I going to do with this shit? And apparently, you know, I still have them. But I, I you know, someone's like, you know, A, you should put them on because they're also signed by the artist. It's like I have a Peter Max and I had no idea. I mean, I knew who he was, but it was like a Peter Max thing. And it's like, you know, and, I f and I forgot all about it because he did 30 years of CBS. He did something for the 30 year logo of CBS or whatever the hell it was. And he signed it to all of us that worked on it. And it was thrown in my closet. And I'm like, well, I have an original Peter Max. This is pretty freaking cool, Gay Ann. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just want to say it's, t believe it or not, I told you an hour and a half went fast. Um, I want to thank you, Andy. Sorry for ram down. Ram no, ram oh my God, it's so <laughs> interesting. Thank you for coming on the oh. show. Thank you for sharing your stories, your musical expertise. I would love to have you back. You're always welcome at a seat at this table. Um, but thank you so much. And again, you know, where can people find you? Uh, well, they can find me on Instagram or Facebook. I'm building a website right now, but Andrea Andy Franklin. Andrea Andy Franklin. And again, the um, the information for the organization that you're with or you, you work with? Uh, well, one thing, smokefreemusiccities.org. Uh, and musicality.com and um, that's about it for well now. thank <laughs> you so much and then we have Lisa Rubel so Lisa if people want to buy a high end luxury property <laughs> that has been staged or on stage where can they find you Instagram the real estater or on Facebook or on TikTok now I'm obsessed with TikTok are you doing the dancing shit and singing shit mm, on TikTok I'm doing a little bit of everything but I, I have to budget my time daily <laughs> For my TikTok time. So. They're rolling me off. 
No, 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 no. The speech is not over. The speech. No, the big speech. Well, you're also, as I told you, you're always welcome to come back. I was waiting for this day. Were you nervous? Are you better now? Were you nervous? Not nervous? I'm good to go. You're good to go. So you can move smooth sailing from here on in. Xanax kicked in. Awesomeness. Woohoo. And then Marguerite, Margie Duran, thank you so much again for joining us. We didn't have any of your expertise on the show tonight. It wasn't my night. <laughs> what can you do? There'll be another one. Where can people find you, darling? You can find me on Facebook, Margie Duran, uh, or my email, healingglac at Yahoo. And if people want an appointment or book with you, is it uh, should they go through the email? or The email is better for, for appointments. It's more private. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to say one more thing just for yeah, mus- yeah, yeah. musicality.com yeah, yeah. to book with Craig Bartok. He is the member of Heart, so he is the founder of it. So I just wanted to clarify that. I'd just be working with him in some capacity on it. But Craig Bartok. Craig Bartok. Okay. Um, Mar Shane, what are you up to? What about those shoes? Well, I'm, you know, that's my passion right now is I'm designing crazy high heel shoes. <laughs> Shane. Thank I'm you. Mara Shane. That's my handle. Those Thank heels you. rock. <coughs> they do. They're beautiful. They're freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. I, Thank you. They're wonderful. You know I like them. Um, Amadeus, Amadeus, Amadeus. Hey. I am, let's see, I'm going to the East Coast. I'm very excited to my other home to do some of a project I've written. I channel historical people and then I find their graves. So and cool. They do exist. Mm-hmm. So I'm, do- I'm doing that in two weeks. In wow. Rhode Island and in Boston. I'm thrilled. Anybody who knows me well knows that. Um, and I'm going to be filming that. And I'll talk about it next time. And I'm also doing some music stuff uh, with a friend of mine who's an unbelievable fiddler and has won every fiddling contest and is has been allowed into the world of uh, Memphis and the Deep South is, I really believe, the only white Jewish woman fiddling down there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, she's uh, fucking awesome, and uh, yeah, there's a lot more stories on that. So I'll be seeing her, and her name's Alana Ka- Katz, and she's amazing. Wonderful. Check her out. She has an album. W J F in the house. White yep. Jewish fiddler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gotta get those t-shirts yep. out. Mm-hmm. W J F in the house. Trade, trademark. Rockin'. <laughs> and, and my name is spelled differently than what it keeps showing, so nobody. It's A M A D E S. My mom, you know, I don't know what to say. So you can find me. That way on Facebook, Amadeus Amadeus on Instagram, Amadeus, and I am Amadeus. Uh, <laughs> 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 and then, last but not least, Cheryl Murphy. Hey guys, I have a great event coming up. It's an online event where I'll be doing mediumship readings Ooh. with Thomas John on September 9th, and you can find out that information on my upcoming events page. On my website, Facebook, uh, Facebook and Instagram, it's all Medium Cheryl, so MediumCheryl.com and at Medium Cheryl. So look out for my upcoming events. I think we have something new, Cheryl. Facegram. 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 Yeah. I think <laughs> Facegram is perfect. I think that should be the new option. It's like the birth of a new... I'd like we need yeah. another freaking social media platform. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to thank Sean for manipulating and f- doing Sean. things thank you, Sean. on the program of course, of tonight. Course. Um, everyone out there, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, the show is on. It's between the sheets. The first and third Friday of every month here on the United Broadcasting Network. On the next, I have to do this because I don't remember anything. The next show is September 3rd, and on that show, we will have psychologist Lauren Costantine as well as stylist, designer to the stars, Joanne Lavin. So it's going to be a fun show. I'm just like having, I don't care. It's like how many people can fit in this room safely and have you on (laughs) Zoom? We are so in. Um, This is my version of having a little house party. So I just want to thank you all for tuning in and supporting us each and every time that we're on and continuing to um, listen to the show and all the aggregators, um, the audio portion. And, of course, we are on YouTube, Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. Thank you so much. Um, be safe. Be well. Um, 
I want to thank Vicki Wagner, who cut out early for being on the show. So thank you, Wiki, Vicki. Wiki. Wiki, 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 Wiki. Wiki. Uh, Vicki from Sacramento. And, um, and but, but really, um, it's a team. And um, welcome to my home. Welcome to our home. Pull up a chair. And Jesus, fuck. Will you people start calling in? It's yeah. real. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Like, are we that captivating? I'm sure we are. But, I mean, we do want your viewpoint, too. Um, we're just a bunch of chicks, just a bunch of friends hanging out, talking to shit. So uh, thank you so much. Be safe. We will. Have a wonderful weekend. And as always, namaste. Thank you, Gan. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay, girls, I got...